Okay, in this video, we want to look at finding um, points in space and how do we draw them and that sort of thing. Um, typically, when we're trying to draw something in three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface, you'll indicate, you'll do something like this um, to indicate the different axes. Um, our IB book likes to call this the x-axis, this the y-axis, and this z coming up off the page. Um, I know that other books might do it differently or in physics they might do it differently. Just go ahead and... I would get in the habit of doing what IB does, the IB math in this world, um, and make sure you label. So that, that keep, stay in that habit of, so you know what's what. So let's say I have the point 2, uh, 1, 3. I don't know. Then what I need to do, this is the x, the y, the z. So I'm going to come out two units in the x and, um, and then one unit in the y. And we're going to draw a lot of, basically this is, we're going to draw a rectangular prism. But in, when we take that three-dimensional object and lay it flat, the, these things start to look like parallelograms. Okay, so um, notice this side here is parallel to that, and this stays parallel here. Okay, so then our z value means we're going to come up one, two, three like that. And we're going to take, here's this one, and we're going to take that same length and do it on all four corners. And here's my attempt at drawing that rectangular prism. Okay, so what we've done here is we've gone one, two units in the x direction, one unit in the y, and then up one, two, three in the z. And so this point right here is the point two, one, three. So if I were to look at, say, this point, this point right here, we'd have gone, we didn't do anything as far as the x value, we didn't move, to, the x would be zero. The y went one unit and the z is three. Okay, so that's the coordinate of that one right there. Um, if we need to do anything that's negative, oh, sorry, that looks silly. Anyway, say I have the point, that's gonna bother me. I'm gonna try again. I don't know that that's much better. Okay, if I have the point negative two, one, three, Oh, that's the same thing. Negative two, four, er, zero. Nope, not zero. I don't want to do zero. One. Okay, then what I've done is I need to label this x, y, and z. My x is going to go in the negative direction, so I'm going to draw a dotted line to indicate that I'm coming back in the negative direction. I'm coming back two. And then my y, I went one, two, three, four. So now this little rectangle or parallelogram, depending on what our shape our angles are. This has gone in the negative direction back here and then over four. So this is the point in negative two, four, zero, and now we need to come up one in the z direction. So here's that, here's this, here's this, here's this. So this is my attempt. This is not my, my forte is not drawing. Okay, but the point that we care about, we had gone back two in the x direction, over four in the y, and up one in the z. We're looking at this point right here. Okay, practice these. You'll get better at them um, as you go. The other thing that we will look at is how to find the midpoint. Okay, so if I've got x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, and z2, what I need to do to find that midpoint is I need to take the average of the x's, the average of the y's, and the average of, okay, so hang on, let's just say, this is a, this is b, and so the midpoint becomes the average of the x's, the average of the y's, and the average of the z's. This, right in here, is something that you've seen from geometry. So we're just now adding the z component. If I want to find the distance formula, what happens here is, okay, let's see if I can make, if I have this rectangular prism, I've got two random points. Let's say I've got this point here and this point here. Let's say that this dimension is x, this dimension is y, and this dimension is z. Then in order to get from this point here to this point there, what I have to do is I have to go x units this way, y units that way, and z. The distance between them um, well, here notice that there's a right triangle down on the base. So I drew on my Kleenex box in class today. So um, this across the base, that length is the square root of x squared plus y squared 
that's hard to read, but hopefully you caught what I'm saying, because the Pythagorean theorem here, this is a nice little right angle um, in our base. Well, now what we need to do is then we need to take that and make use this triangle here. So I've got the triangle that goes across the base, comes up this side, and then it goes through the middle of my box. So what we know is this is what we're looking for. We know that this side across the, across the base here is the square root of x squared plus y squared because of Pythagorean theorem, and this is z. So now when I go to figure out with Pythagorean theorem what I have here, this becomes the square root of x squared plus y squared squared plus z squared is equal to, well, the question mark squared. Um, so d squared or whatever you want to call that. Notice the square and the square root cancel out. x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to d squared. If I just want d, then I need to take the square root of both sides. Um, so when we talk, this is great. Well, basically what I did is I said, okay, this is the origin. And this is the point x, y, z. Well, what happens when this is not at the origin? Well, then what we need to do is we need to find the difference between in our x values and the difference in our y values and the difference in our z values. So the distance formula is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. Okay, and that'll allow you to find the distance between two points in space. I am going to probably make another video. Let me look through the book and see if there's anything else I need to highlight for you. Um, but as always, practice, practice, practice.